Hi everyone, Bandana here and welcome to another deck build. Today we're doing the second infantry. We've already kind of looked at this if you've seen the video I did on the veterancy system. I figured this was a good one to do next after we've done a packed one. So we'll have NATO today. Second infantry. It's all about the SAS, right? We'll get to that in a minute. Logistics, we're going to go with the Bedford supply truck. Honestly, there's not a huge amount I would be doing different in this deck at the moment. That might change in the future, but at the moment, definitely my two Bedford supply trucks. If this was a 1v1 deck, I would very much consider taking the Chinook supply as well. And then I want my Rover Command. This is a team build deck, so I'm not going to worry about more supply. But if it was a 1v1, I would definitely consider taking more. Let's move on nice and quick to the infantry. So, straight down the SAS. Yoink, yoink. Take them both, uh, switch them over to Saxons is my personal preference. Some people bring them in Bedfords. I like the Saxons. I think the Saxons provide some good fire support with the machine gun. When you run into enemy infantry that are forward deployed and they don't have a vehicle with a machine gun on it and their vehicle's trundling off, you've then got a Saxon with a machine gun on that is going to support your SAS. You've got to keep it further away and fire from distance but that additional firepower could make all the difference in a fight. That is why I keep the Saxons. Next up, Long Range Anti-Tank, Milan 2. Do you rank it up, don't you, in the new system? If you do, you get some better aiming time. That's quite nice. And you get the increase in static accuracy of 5%. And it goes down to 4 availability. Please ignore the motion. Again, if you've watched my veterancy guide video about the new veterancy system that is nonsense it needs fixing um i'm leaning towards leaving it unranked up the reason for that is i would rather have more than less these guys are going to get artillery they're going to get killed very quickly they're going to get bombed they're only a strength two squad if they get hit in a the building they're dead most of the time so unless you're microing them very effectively which you might be able to I don't think it's worth ranking them up personally. I think 50% is fine. 60% would be lovely, but you only get two of them. So let's leave that as is. And I bring them in the Rover. Just nice, quick little vehicle that gets sold afterwards. Okay, next. I would consider the L6 Wombat. The reason for that is, although it's one of probably the worst recallless rifles in the game, I have seen it be very annoying and effective in tournament games and that really surprised me i'm not sure i don't think i'll pull it in but i wouldn't rule it out necessarily okay next up i want some line infantry there's a lot of choices for infantry here i'm a little bit worried that all these rejiggings of divisions means that the divisions that have gained the german units might end up losing them um so i'm a little bit reluctant to put the jaeger in because I'm worried that in however many months when they start fiddling with the other divisions, they get removed. Um, so I'm wondering if it's possible to build a sensible deck without them. So I'm going to pretend the German troops aren't here. What I would say is HSF and the Heimatsuchen, very good squads, that now come in without any negatives except for the reservist trait which can be negated by military police. If you bring one of these squads, I think they're fine, but I think you also need to bring the military police with them, so you're going to be taking up two card slots to bring them in. Lots of availability, though. 12 availability is plenty, um, where you might only get six of another squad, so I wouldn't rule them out. I'm not sure if that's to my playstyle for this deck, but I would certainly not rule out those reservist units now as long as you've got military police to go with them in this i quite like the arm rifles i like the air mobiles the terriers at group's pretty good the terriers aren't bad either but that you know these guys are the same price you just get more of those but these guys have better weapons but these guys yeah it's the damage output of these guys they've got a better rate of fire and they have two of the machine guns instead of one machine gun or one light support weapon. So 
I find the arm rifles better, and they also come in the Warrior Milan, and the Warrior Milan to me is very important in this deck because it offers a lot of firepower. It's all about the supporting fire. I would very much rank these up to trained. You want the stress resistance and the stress recovery. Everything else is a bonus, but I really want the stress resistance. I wouldn't rank them up any further because then you only get four and then I'd be stuck with eight. I'd rather have six and then I can also have 12 Warrior Milans. So there we go. We'll take that and then we'll take another set of those. Okay. So we've got Warriors. We've got Arm Rifles. Great. Next, I'm going to take the Air uh, Mobiles. I'm going to take them in a Saxon. You could bring them in the Lynx. I've seen that used in the tournament games and in Ranked. I think there is a benefit to that on some maps where you can have quick response for the Air Mobile teams. I'm quite happy to bring them in the Saxon for my playstyle. Would I rank them up? If you rank them up, you only get five, but obviously they do get all of that additional stress resistance. It's... Hmm. It's a difficult one. I think five is enough for most games. You might run out in a 10v10. But I think for smaller team games, I feel like taking them as a veteran might be beneficial. So I'm going to try that out. So we will take those in a Saxon. I'm taking two cards of those. So I've got 10 of those and I've got 12 of the arm rifle. Now maybe we want something a little bit cheaper. I quite like the Terriers AT group because they've got that Carl Gustav and also they have a submachine gun. The submachine guns can be quite devastating. And these are cheap squads. They're only four man. Do you rank them up? I mean, you could, and you still get six. Uh, gives them a little bit more accuracy on the submachine gun, and I suppose it adds to their sort of stress resistance and stuff. They're only a four-man squad, so I think I'd take them ranked up as well. You're still going to be having a lot of infantry in this deck. You know, it's, it's an infantry deck. Next, before I add anything else, I really want a commander. Terrier's leader is a good choice. It has the law. The rifle's leader also has the law. Between these two, you only get two of each. I wouldn't rank them up. They're both six-man squads. That is slightly cheaper. That's the only thing that's making me think Terrier's leader, because it's slightly cheaper. These guys aren't going to get in the fight, but I'd like them to have a launcher so that if they do get in a tight spot, they can fire back. The other options here are the Air Mobile Leader, which unfortunately don't get any anti-tank, and the Assault Pioneers Leader, which again don't get any anti-tank. They are cheaper again though, but they're dead if they get caught by a vehicle. The Jaeger Commander is not a bad unit, but again, as I said, I'm trying to build this without having any German units in there, just in case. So we will go with the Terrier's Leader but I can completely understand you taking something else. Do I put something in this last slot? We have 6, 12, 10, so we've got 28 sets of infantry, 30, I kind of want something else, it's just a standard infantry squad. I'm very tempted by the standard terriers, just because of the ability to flood the field with them. And you get 8 if you rank it up. The other option in my head is obviously the Jaeger squads. I think the Jaeger are very good squads as well. And also you have the Air Mobile gun groups, which are very good in defensive positions. Bear in mind that they are static with their medium machine gun. They are not a light support weapon. You have to be stood still. They're great at sitting in a defensive position, like a lot of these machine gun squads that have three machine guns. Sit them in a building, defend, shoot at the enemy. Great. For me right now, I kind of am leaning towards taking the Terriers and giving them a chance. There's also the Terriers gun group, by the way, which is a very similar vein to the Air Mobile gun group. They're just cheaper, because they're smaller. You know, it's half the size. Um, I don't think they're a bad squad either. For 20 points, you get 9 of them, and again, it's all about their capability to, you know, dish out a lot of damage with those machine guns. Those guys dish out more because they've got 3. And the Terriers gun group. Definitely options. Um, I'm really... I, this is... My last slot here is a real struggle. I'm tempted to go with the Air Mobile gun group. Just for... Their ability to defend an area. The problem is... They come in in Saxons... And I can't really sell the Saxons afterwards. I kind of want something I can sell the transport, which is why I'm leaning towards the Terriers. 
because they're a bigger squad and they're just sort of a bit of fluff to fill in because we've got good squads otherwise. Let's go with the Terriers for now. I may regret that later. Okay. So, moving on to artillery. You don't get a lot of choice here. The best thing in this tab is the 120mm mortar, but it is German. And again, I'm not sure what's going to happen with those in the long term. I do have this fear that they will be getting shifted around. I'm going to take the 155mm cannons because I quite like those. I'm actually going to take those. I'm going to... I'm going to take the 105mm as well. You could rank these up, but you only get two, and I don't think that it's worth it for their aiming time, to be honest. But I think peppering buildings with these might work out quite well. They do collapse buildings, even if they don't kill what's in it. And then I kind of want to take mortars. And as I say, I'm a little bit worried. I would rather have the 120mm, but I said I'm going to do it without putting any Germans in. So we will take... The 81mm British ones. Tank tab. Challengers ranked up. Remember that ranking them up to trained is like tra ranking them up to veteran previously. You definitely want to rank up your challengers to trained. Two cards of. Command tank. And then... <sighs> I think I want to take some M48s as cannon fodder. And I think I want to take the command tanks as well. Although I've got some command infantry, so do I need more command tanks? If this was a 1v1 deck for ranked, I'd probably say yes. Because I've currently got two, three commands, two commands, it's five. This would be six, seven, eight with the M48s. I think... Six is enough for team games slash 10v10. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to leave it as is and move on. We can always come back and buy some Rover Milans if necessary. Okay. Ferret is in a weird position. You only get four per card. The Fox is the Fox. Eh, 60 points. Air Mobile Scouts are a very good squad that can get into combat. If you rank them up, you can have five. They can come in the Saxon. They, they are capable of combat because of the damage they can dish out with all these machine guns. So I'd take those ranked up so you have five of them. You could do that as well, but I feel like if I'm going to get an infantry squad into a fight, it's these guys. And they're pretty effective against other infantry. Terrier Scouts, cheap and cheerful, and then we have the normal Scouts, which do have anti-tank. Um, they're 7 per card, unranked up, so it doesn't really matter, you're just paying double for these ones. Both 4-man squads, what are you paying for here? I guess you're paying for the law, the anti-tank. I do like a recon team with an anti-tank, so I'm going to take that. Sniper? I'm very tempted by, to be honest, because they do get a massive damage bonus on that sniper rifle um, once they are sat still for so many seconds. So they can dish out a lot of damage. Again, I would usually take the Jaeger of Clara, but as we know, I'm a little bit worried about the Germans being removed, so I'm not going to put them in the deck. So I'm going to go for the snipers, I think. Okay. So, Javelin, LML, there's no change here. I'm not going to rank it up. I'm taking a stack of those. I'm going to take the Rapier SFA, F FSA even. I'm not going to rank it up. I want all three of them. There's something to be said, perhaps, for ranking it up, but I, I don't think it's enough of an improvement right now for that one. So we'll go with that. And then there's the Rapier and the Tract Rapier. And the Tract Rapier is five points more. Not ranked up, though. That has 60% accuracy, don't ignore the motion fire, it can't fire on the move. That has 55, if you rank it up you only get 4, but it is more mobile. I mean... I don't know. Between the two of them... Whew, 
I kind of want the mobility. If I'm relying on javelins and rapier FSAs for everything else, I kind of want the tractor rapier's mobility. So they go in. Okay. You could take something else here because there's another one point slot. So there's every reason to take some more javelin LMLs or something. But I'm actually going to move on and, you know, maybe come back if there's a point left at the end. Helicopters. I think the Gazelle Rockets are still fine for harassment, and I kind of like the Lynx Hell Arm. And I discussed in my video looking at the veterancy system, would you rank these up? Going from 65 to 75. Oh, sorry, 65 to 70 even. Ooh. Um, I think not. I think I'd rather just have four of them still. As it stands in this division anyway. Air tab. Not the best air tab in the game, is it? So we've got the Phantom AA. It goes in, doesn't it? It's our only long, long range AA unit, so we need that in. Could you take two cards of these? Probably. Um, we don't get any seed. We get lots of Harriers, which are... They're cheapish, and I kind of like the Rocket ones sometimes. I definitely want to take a Jaguar, because they're a dive bomber. So the Javu Jaguars are very good. That is four big bombs. That is eight small bombs. I kind of want the four big bombs. 3.5 HE damage, 6.77. Big suppression. Less than half the suppression. Kind of want that. I feel like dropping those on top of a tank is going to hurt the tank. Tornado GR1 is going to drop from height and not from diving. That one, I guess, isn't necessarily a bad choice if you want to just clear some buildings. Kind of want to take the Jaguar Cluster just for that additional tank clearance. Because I feel like this division has decent tanks, but you don't get a lot of them, so anything that's going to help you clear tanks is good. The rocket attack choices for the Harrier, that one's got AM9, so it can engage air targets as well. And then you've got the Harrier there, which is very cheap. That's almost worth suiciding into some helicopters. You know what I mean? And I kind of feel like the Phantoms can shoot at helicopters with the AM9s, but they don't have the cannon. So I kind of want to take a Harrier. And it's between the Harrier GR3 Rocket 1 and the AA. Just because I feel like that has multiple uses. Costs, but it costs more, and it might be a suicide mission. That's difficult. That is difficult, actually. I think I'm going to try the Rocket 1 and see if I use the rockets. If not, then I would switch to the Harrier AA. I think that's what I'd go for. I'm looking for something that can engage choppers and potentially be used against ground targets, infantry, things like that, just to dish out a bit of damage. We'll give it a go. Um, okay, so we're actually only at 46 here of 50. I'd possibly be tempted to consider taking tornadoes as well for all of that firepower to clear buildings but i'm not known for trusting my airplay so let's have a look back through logistics i don't want to touch in this deck infantry i'm happy with artillery i don't want to touch the tank tab i could be persuaded to take some m48 commands or possibly a rover milan recon I'm going to stick the foxes in there. That's what I'm going to do. That takes me to 49. As I was umming and ahhing, and the foxes can be very useful and very annoying. So we'll do that. That gives me a nice variety there. Except for the gazelle. But I, that's fine. Air mobile scouts can get into combat. Scouts can just be scouts. Sniper can be a bit of both. Fox can be an annoyance. AA tab... I guess we take something else here, and I'd be tempted to take the other Rapier FSA. I think 8 Javelin LMLs is enough. Just keep them 
in a reasonably safe position. I think six tracked rapiers is enough without taking the other rapiers. Here, I would either take the FSA, a second stack of, or I would take more javelin NMLs personally. I don't rate the javelin over the javelin NML. Remember, the javelin NML is also a five person squad, so they survive longer. So there you go, let's have a recap. So logistics, two Bedford supply trucks at Rover Command, infantry, SAS, Milan 2, arm rifles times two in the Warrior Milan, air mobiles in Saxons, Terriers AT group in a Rover, Terriers leader in the Bedford, and the Terriers in the Bedford. I genuinely believe you can play around with this. There are a lot of good options here, including the Terriers Pioneers and the Assault Pioneers. You'll notice I don't have any. It's not because they're not good squads. It's just because satchel charges are very situational and you have to get close but once you do get close with them they are devastating so i wouldn't say don't take them i would possibly switch out the terriers for those that would be the other thing i would do it's sort of thinking about it now i would consider switching the terriers out for the assault pioneers if i was feeling like close quarters combat was becoming an issue artillery 155mm, 105mm, 81mm mortars. Again, I would more recommend the 120mm Tampella mortars, but I'm worried that they're going to remove German units from the deck. We will have to wait and see. Um, tank tab, challengers, challenger mark II command, and oh... The M48 is technically a German unit here. I can't add that, so we go with the Rover Milan instead. Ooh. That changes things, doesn't it? I bet there was someone screaming at the screen that I had done that without really thinking about it. M48 to me is an American tank. I hadn't even really thought about it. Okay, fine, so the Rover goes in there instead. Urk. Very light on tanks here. I still want the challenges ranked up, though. Uh, MOBA Scouts, Scout, Sniper, Fox. Javelin, Rapier, FSA times 2 and the Tracked Rapier. Helicopters, Gazelle Rockets for a little bit of harassment. And the Hell Arm to assist when needed. And then the Air Tab, Phantom, Phantom, Jaguar HG2, Jaguar Cluster, and the Harrier Rocket, which may get switched out for the Harrier AA. And there you have it. A second infantry deck build. I genuinely believe you can play around with the infantry. I think there's a lot of good choices there, so you don't have to go with what I've gone with. It's just my preference. I would recommend the Jaguars because they're dive bombers over the Tornado at first glance, but you could, of course, take the Tornado for clearance of buildings and things like that. There you have it, 2nd Infantry. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please do like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all soon for some more deck builds.